Hi, Internet. Hi. This is David and Maddie from American Field Trip. Here to talk to you about planning a trip to the Faroe Islands. We just got back. We just got back. Yesterday. The Faroe Islands is the new Iceland, I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard it said. That's what we're saying. Now. That's what we're saying. The Faroe Islands is between Iceland and Scotland. It's a, a it's part of Denmark. Yeah. Um, and it's out in the middle of the North Atlantic. It's incredibly beautiful. The scenery is very Iceland esque. Um, but, but it's unique. Like I don't want to compare it, it too much to Iceland. Uh, yeah, it is very unique. It's beautiful. It's like in my mind, it's like a combo of like the Arctic and Hawaii or something. It's, it's very dramatic mountains. Crazy cliffs, uh, cool. no trees, so it's a very kind of tundra-ish landscape. There's sheep everywhere. Parts of it reminded us of New Zealand, parts of Alaska, parts of just so many places. It's a unique, really cool place. It's very, very incredible um, and definitely worth a visit. And what was really fun about it was that there were very few other visitors there. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking to kind of get away from it all it's an awesome place to go do that it's a very it's a very quiet and peaceful destination there just there there weren't a lot of crowds we were there in the off season we went in november um but but even so i don't think that it sees a ton a ton of visitors and there aren't that many people who live there in the first place so um it's a really unique experience to kind of feel like you have a place to yourself um, pretty cool to, to feel that isolated and it's it's very very cool so how to get there you can fly through Denmark Scotland Iceland mm -hmm. I think there might be a flight out of Ireland Atlantic Airways is the national airline of the Faroe Islands so mm -hmm. they operate a lot of the flights we flew through Copenhagen and our flights from New York round trip were just over four hundred dollars each mm -hmm. um, we there there are regularly very good deals to Keep an eye out. To Scandinavia and to Iceland from the States and especially from the East Coast. So keep an eye out because if you can get to one of those places for cheap, the flights from there to the Faroe Islands aren't crazy expensive. Yeah. So um, with the flights, give yourself enough time there um, because it is very common apparently for flights to not be able to land in the Faroe yeah, Islands. We had this experience. Yeah, this experience. <laughs> Our flight couldn't land because it was too dang windy and they tried to land and it was terrifying. It was <laughs> Yeah, I even kind of like turbulence. Like it makes me it's feel kind of like my travel's a little edgy. This was this like was we terrified. were being thrown about the plane. It's the only time that my seatbelt has actually had to like hold me in to my seat. It like was... I would have flown out had I not been wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> there was good reason that we couldn't land. So we turned around, went back to Copenhagen and flew out the next day when the weather was totally perfect. So, uh, so just keep that in mind. When you're scheduling your timing for this, try to stay. We always say stay as long as you can and to go fewer places and, and spend more time there. But this is definitely a case where you're going to want to be flexible. Yeah. You're also going to want as much time as you can because, like, I would say at least five days, more comfortably a week, mm -hmm. and more if you have it. There's plenty to do there. But the big thing is that the weather is super changeable. You will yeah. definitely encounter rain. There will be foggy days probably where you won't be able to see very much of the scenery. Um, and you're gonna want to figure out where you wanna go based on where the weather is. The weather can be quite different on the different islands. Um, so it's a place where you definitely wanna be flexible and you definitely wanna have a little bit of room to to yeah. wiggle and to try to have the best experience that you can have with whatever cards you are dealt. There will be probably at least a day where you just kind of hang out inside because it's rainy and Perhaps. gross. Perhaps. Or you venture out, just put on your rain gear and, yeah. and just go venture out, which, which we also did. Which leads us into, what should you bring? <laughs> you should definitely bring, bring rain gear. Rain gear. <laughs> rain gear and layers. If you're going to be hiking, it was in the 40s and 50s when we were there in yeah. November, we got hot on all of our hikes. Yeah. Um, and then we layers, would get to the layers. top and we'd be freezing because it was really windy. So just layer up, bring rain gear. Um, the hikes that we went on were also super muddy, so don't go do it oh, in yeah. tennis shoes, I would no. say. Definitely bring high top hiking, hiking boots. For sure. And you want something with traction, too, because it was pretty slippery. And we super had some, slippery. Like... We had some injuries. <laughs> we had some... There were some episodes. It just... It's fine. Mud. I'll take fine. anything over mud. I'll take snow and ice <laughs> over mud. Yeah, some, <laughs> some personal beef with mud. Yeah, it's, um, it's muddy. It's, it's pretty muddy. It's a very yeah. wet country. Um, and the trails aren't super well marked and we're not super 
yeah trodden there were a lot of there's a lot of trails there and the trails are trails. they're old they're like from the viking days when they connected the towns with these cairn paths mm -hmm. and they like go up over the mountains and stuff so there there's well established trail networks around but it's not i think that now that the faroe islands are seeing more tourists coming in they're having to upgrade their trails for more visitors because we encountered a lot of really like muddy trails that were washed out things washed out and, like and this isn't this isn't a negative this is just no to say this that, is just that these are not super well beaten paths so yeah. um there were some that were there were some like there were some shorter nice trails that were that were easy and then some of the longer more challenging hikes we did had really difficult trail conditions like lots of loose rock lots of steep steep muddy slopes this was also us not necessarily being on the yeah. trail. Yeah, the trails are not well marked. We got it's open. very easy to get a little off, off the trail. <laughs> anyway, all that to say, bring the right gear, bring boots if you're going to be yeah. hiking. And I would say that the, the, the person who would, I think, have the greatest time in the Faroe Islands is someone who loves outdoor stuff, loves great scenery, yeah. potentially loves to take pictures because it's an amazing place yeah. to photograph. Um, and then, yeah, just if, if you are a hiker, this is like nirvana. It's like Hyper's paradise. such amazing hiking. It's a unique landscape to hike yeah. in. Yeah, and you don't have to go super far to get landscapes that are just yeah. off the charts amazing. So um, And there's no trees. So the views yeah, are huge so far. and epic yeah. the whole hike. <laughs> yeah. Um, when to go, you can go any time of year there. Even mm -hmm. though it's in the North Atlantic, they don't get, they get snow, but the temperatures stay like mostly above freezing yeah it's um, like the pacific northwest kind of but this, or like or like southeastern alaska you know yeah um that where it doesn't get like freezing freezing cold all winter mm -hmm. um what you will get is a ton of rain a lot of wind fog um but that weather is going to be around all year so yeah. your best option for sunny days is going to be in july and august um and you will also have very long days at that time of year so depending on what you're up for um that can be a great time to go or you can go anytime and you might be able to get um good deals on flights and stuff in the off season but yeah. it's certainly a place that you can feasibly visit in the off season and that's a, a really good time to look into going mm -hmm. and, and one if, sorry, I'll say if you're and if you're a photographer who's wanting to go and take a bunch of cool pictures, it's a landscape that looks super cool in fog and clouds and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's going to be beautiful no matter it's what. It's beautiful no matter what. Yeah. One thing that we really liked about it being November, um, the days are very short. The sun was up like nine and then it was yeah. dark by four. Yeah. I like so. sunset, like sunset mostly no. over yeah. twilight getting dark at yeah. like 4.30. Um, and which meant that the, the sun was low in the sky and the light was really beautiful. It looked like sunrise or sunset yeah. no matter what time of the day we were It's like were golden out. hour all day long. And then it was a true vacation because we didn't yeah. feel pressure to be up and at them super early. And we didn't feel like we needed to stay out super late, which might sound really lame, but it was an <laughs> advantage for us. We went without our kids and so... so we kind of wanted to relax and we yeah. could have like a good a good full day of adventuring and feel like, you know, we're good. And then, we and then we could go eat dinner at five and then go sit in our hotel room yeah. and just like hang out. Like watch a movie and read your book and yeah. relax. So <laughs> that's another, if, depending on what kind of vacation you're looking for, might be a perfect, I mean, it was a perfect vacation for it us was pretty great. to just go out and do an amazing hike, have some great driving and then go home at like five and just, and just Sleep chill and it was it was fantastic yeah so that was a really nice thing about the light if you're there in the summer obviously you're gonna have the on the other spectrum you can have long mm -hmm. amazing days and it'll be daylight whenever you go out and that is really fun too and just like a note on the light as a photographer photographing in the far north in when we were in alaska i wasn't a huge fan of the light like you had light low on the horizon so it was nice and directional but it was kind of pale not very exciting but in the Faroe Islands, since you're on the ocean, everything is kind of atmospheric, you know? It's very diffused. There's like fog and kind of spray and stuff. So the light is magical from it sun up to sundown. So beautiful. It was incredible. And if just you're not beautiful. a photographer, you can just look at it. You just enjoy it. <laughs> everything is just so pretty all the time. Yeah, it's really great. Yeah. Um, how to get around. 
rent a car, rent a car. probably. There is a great bus system. It's just that there aren't that many people that live there, so the buses don't run super often. You can yeah. for sure get around by them, but if you want to have the most flexibility, rent a car. Um, everything was cheaper than we assumed it would be based on prices in like Norway where we've yeah. traveled before or Iceland where we've where we've done a lot of research we've, about we've costs there. there um, it, it's expensive but it's more like maybe Britain than like Norway I'm like re renting a car was, was like I want to say it was like like sixty dollars a day or something like that fifty sixty so bucks a day it's not insane the hotel was not insane yeah um, and there's a huge range of options for hotels. I mean, there's not any like super luxury hotels, but you can go from like a solid, like, like nice business type hotel, you know, with a restaurant and a gym and stuff like that down to, they have hostels, they have lots of Airbnb options. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of cheaper accommodation options. Yeah. But we would say to rent a car, brush up on your stick shift skills, because you'll probably yeah. be driving a manual. Um, <laughs> it's all manual. Yeah. Um, but there's no traffic, so there's no one to hit. <laughs> yeah, there's very little traffic. The driving's super straightforward. And um, you will probably be staying in Torshon. Um, am I saying that right? I think so. Torshon. Torshon. Okay, don't. Uh, I still don't know how to pronounce any Faroese words. Here's the thing. Words. Faroese is way different from Danish, which I tried to learn a bit of before we it's left. Very different. Super different from Danish. And the pronunciation makes no phonetic sense whatsoever. So, but everybody speaks English, so it's fine. Yes. Um, and everyone's very bad. nice about it. If they're super nice about it. I just felt bad because I always try to pick up some of the language so I can like order my dinner in the language. And I kind of get by, but this yeah. was, there was, there was no, no hope. way. It was um, totally weird. So if we just botch all the, the names while we're talking. Yeah, I know. They, they speak Faroese. They don't speak Danish or Icelandic. And or it's very it's different. Fair, it's their own thing. Um, but you'll probably be staying in Torshan. Yeah, which is the main city which there. Which is the largest city. Um, and it's and a it's, good idea to stay there. It's a great idea to stay there. That's where you'll find most of the accommodations. There are hotels outside of Torshan, and there are a lot of Airbnb options. Well, not a lot, but there are Airbnb options oh. around. Um, um, but Torshan is kind of the main base of operations. That's and where that's, food is. That's where food is. It's like a, a good place to, to get provisions, and that's kind of where... Yes where everything and is. it's small i think our we drove about as far as you can drive and it's a two-hour drive yeah. so to the hike that we did yeah. that was the farthest it was it was two hours out there and the drive is beautiful the whole way um but mostly everything is within an hour of torshan yeah um so getting around if you if you're driving around you can get to a bunch of the islands just via bridges and tunnels um, you can also take a ferry. They have great car ferries. The times are all weird, so definitely look into that because it was not very consistent from day to day, and it didn't always make. Yeah. Uh, there was sometimes it would be they'd go very early in the morning, and then there wouldn't be another ferry until. Just like, read the timetables carefully. Yeah, plan ahead on that kind of stuff. But yeah. definitely worthwhile to take a ferry to one of the southern islands or one of the outer islands. Mm -hmm. um, during the summer, they have a huge population of seabirds there, and that's what draws a lot of the tourism that they do have. And and we didn't see any of that because we weren't there at the right no, time, but I'd love to there go. There's lots of seagulls. There, but I would love to go back and do that because it, it yeah. looks incredibly amazing, and that's an, a thing that you would definitely um, have a great experience taking a ferry to go out and see on one of the outer islands, or um, there's, a, there's some sea cliffs in Vestmana that supposed to be amazing for seabird viewing yeah. so um you can also get around by helicopter um very affordably weirdly mostly in the summer because of the weather um and the deal is that you can fly you can't fly in and out on the same day apparently so if you are going to be helicoptering to a place um, unless it's a very specific day day tour kind of thing you need to plan on staying in the place that you're helicoptering in Anyway, but otherwise you can take day trips on the ferry and just base yourself in, in one place, which mm -hmm. is what we did. Um, the food, there is good food. Super good food, actually. Really good food. Um, it's expensive to get that really good food. Some, yeah. I, there, were, there were good, cheaper options that were good food, but there aren't like a lot of mid-range, just kind of regular yeah. restaurants. There's like some real good fancier stuff that's expensive and then there's like pizza. Yeah, there's like a lot of pizza. Maybe this is just the way that we were trying to do the trip. <laughs> is that we were like, we were like trying to do it pretty cheap. We we were, we like cashed in all our credit card points for our, for our hotels and we're trying to do it pretty cheap. 
And so we ended up eating a lot of pizza and stuff and then went out a couple of nights to uh, some nice restaurants. There's an amazing sushi restaurant there. Called that, the Tika? Who, who knew? Amazing sushi in the Faroe oh, so Islands. so good because they do so much fishing there. Yeah. They have like really, really fresh. Legitimately some of the best sushi I've had. It was amazing. Um, so so we did a lot of self-catering and that was another good, good reason to be based in Torshan is that we could go to the grocery store yeah. and, and pick up a bunch of stuff for when we were out that we could just like make sandwiches and if you're in store. if you're in an Airbnb with a kitchen then you're set you just yeah, go to the grocery you store just, you just go self cater right. but it's not necessarily a place that I would go uh, for the food like the culinary experience is what you're there for although the the best rated restaurant in Scandinavia a, a region known for its cuisine is in the Faroe Islands and it is called Cox which is uh, unfortunate. Unfortunate. But it's Michelin starred. <laughs> it's Michelin starred. <laughs> it's crazy expensive. Like, Make a reservation like in advance. Like $400 a person. Yeah, it's like Michelin starred prices. I mean, and it's, it's like, like, like chef's table menu. style. Crazy tasting menu. I'm sure it's beautiful. Um, and they serve a lot of lamb. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you're into that, that would be a great place to go. For the rest of us plebes, um, don't, don't, you're not going, you're not going to go there for the food. So just don't, well, don't I don't know. It. You don't pan the food too hard. No, I'm not pan. Not really that the food, food was bad, but if you're not, They're great food. if you don't want to spend a lot of money on food, you're probably just going to yeah. be like eating. It's not like, you know, if you go to I don't know, a country that has a lot of great cheap food. I don't know. I don't know. We live in New York and there's a lot of great places where you can go get amazing food for like For 10 like bucks 10 to $15. Dollars. Anyway. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But mainly, uh, it's just the towns are small. There's not a lot of food options because they're small towns. Yeah, um, there are a lot of sheep that are very cute. Um, cute sheep. Yeah. Check out our blog post for more details of the hikes that we did for tons of pictures. We love the hikes that we did, and there were so many so places beautiful. that we wanted to go. We were there like eight days we for in the a end, week. and. Um, and we had something for sure to do every day. And mm -hmm. I mean, um, my mom thought that we were definitely going to run out of stuff to do. And that a country that small couldn't possibly have that many things for us. Her to mom do. was watching her kids while we were gone. That's why she had. <laughs> that's why she weighed in on. Um, but we, uh, there are so many things to do. There are so many places to go. It's it's really incredible. And we ran into like two other people the entire time we were hiking on any of the trails that we went yeah. on like on like seven hikes there, like you had we had the place for ourselves yeah so Amazing. and and that again that was november um but we had a great experience going in the off season so something yeah. to something to think about Super. if you have any questions about our experience or about planning a trip there i know a lot of you have mentioned that it's on your list of places that you'd love to go mm -hmm. um let us know if there's any way that we can be Yep. of use and like and subscribe for more rambling vlog content <laughs> and uh have a good one